Hi, I'm Tom from Fraser's Gamsat. I'm one of the lead tutors here. Today I'm going to talk to you about chemistry uh, and specifically, obviously, chemistry in the Gamsat. So I think chemistry is, is an area where people freak out. They have a lot of mis misconceptions about um, how much work it's going to be, uh, how difficult it is. And look, don't get me wrong, I think chemistry is definitely one of the ones in the Gamsat that I think trips up a lot of people for different reasons. So today I really want to talk about the three step approach to preparing for chemistry. And I want you to really come away from this video with an understanding of how chemistry is going to be tested on the GAMSAT, what kind of topics you may need to cover, and ultimately um, how to kind of address your weaknesses in chemistry in the GAMSAT. So the first thing with chemistry is that there is a lot of fundamental knowledge you need to know. So I hate fear mongering. I'm really not interested in that. If you've checked out our Facebook page, we love roasting the other companies because they focus so much on the theory. But the thing with chemistry is that it's like very, it's very fundamental based. So if you don't understand why atoms have bonds or why like a carbon, what, what a covalent bond is, a sharing of electrons or what an ionic bond is or um, what the mole is, what a mole of something means. Those things are going to be very limiting in your ability to actually do any of the questions, right? Because then if a question asks you how many moles of carbon is in a, um, I don't know, a kilo of octane, then you're going to really struggle to be able to do that well. So there are a lot of concepts that you need to cover. I think ultimately, um, obviously like in our bridging courses, we take students through it in a kind of graduated way. But... Year 12 chemistry is a good point to start if you have no chemistry background, okay? If you're new in, your, in university, I think first year chemistry is good to revise. If you have to revise with a grain of salt, make sure that you only revise the topics that you think are specifically difficult or think areas of your weakness. So I would personally practice inorganic chemistry a lot. Um, so, you know... Things are like bonding structures, electron shell distributions, those kind of things. You might also want to do um, uh, a little bit of organic chemistry in the sense that I wouldn't memorize all the reactions, but I would ensure that I understand addition reactions, I understand substitution reactions, I understand some cyclic reactions um, and how maybe aromatic compounds can form. Um, I understand chirality because that's a really common thing on the GAMSAT because it's quite visual. It's a perfect thing to test some sort of mirror imagery. Um, we have a whole checklist of things in chemistry that you should cover. Um, and that's something that you can get if you subscribe to the list below. We'll be sending that out on, out on email as well. So it's not worth listing them all out here, but there are some concepts that if you cover, you have a good fundamental basis. The second step is throw out everything that you just learned when you're doing the questions in GAMSAT live in the situation, focus on the things that they use. So maybe four years ago now, I made a video on YouTube for my channel, The Medical Method, if you haven't checked it out, check it out, um, where I was talking about Tetris, right? Bear with me. So in organic chemistry, you have this big molecule, right? All these carbons in the middle, all these different groups, right? And whilst it may be useful to know which bonds break and how things move to get the products, Ultimately, all of the questions were really just asking me if I could see where the different groups in the starting positions had moved here. So R1 may have moved here, R2 may have moved there, R3 may have changed from a um, carbonyl group, so double bond to oxygen, to an OH group down the bottom right or something like that. So if you notice those patterns, then and this is where the fundamentals come in. They may say if the product was 5 cyclocarbonyl hexane, what would the products be? That's where you need to know the fundamentals of organic chemistry to, act to actually be able to draw out the product, man manually draw it out. But then when I look at the product, right? So sorry, draw out the reactant. But then when I look at the product, I can see where they've moved because I know how to draw it out. So that knowing how to draw a, a bigger molecule from a starting name is a skill that you should know in your fundamentals. But you shouldn't have memorized the actual whole reaction sequence because that's a complete waste of time. So this is where I think with organic chemistry, you have to draw a line in the sand. For me, memorizing organic chemistry, organic chemistry was a line in the sand. I want to understand basics of like electronegativity, which bonds break, intermediates, um, Zykov's rule, Zykov's rule about substitution, a few different things, right? But all of, all of those concepts that will be included in the list that we'll send to you are 
given to you in the GAMSAT. So as long as you kind of understand the basics, you can sort of work it out. And that's what I'd recommend. Step three is don't give up. So in your, when you're feeling like you're not exactly sure what the right answer is, make sure you read the content in detail, okay? Read the content and be aware that often they will have changed some of the rules. They'll change, change up the game. They'll change the way it's, they'll be non IUPAC naming. So it'll be unusual naming. They may change the way bonds, what bonds denote or what um, different symbols mean. And that's the thing, that's an advantage for you, even if you don't feel comfortable with chemistry. If you've done step one and built some foundations using, you know, whether it's a dummy's guide to chemistry or phrases bridging videos or whatever it is, you can use your brain to work out what the right answer is. And I think it goes to the game set generally. Kind of you need to use your brain intelligently. I think so many people just give up. They feel, they feel like if I, if, I haven't, if I haven't come across this piece of information, I, I can't do it. I can't engage with it. And that's called an external locus of control. That's when people blame things because they feel like things are out of their control. I'm someone who fundamentally has an internal locus of control. I take responsibility for a lot of things on myself. And whilst that makes it maybe a bit harder for me overall, I think that I can really reason through. And that's why I got 84 and then 100 in section three. And if you make me say it again, I know I'll score that well again, because I don't give up. I use the understanding I have, and then I reason through the end point. And I think that's something that you should really try to do, especially early on. If you feel like you just have no, you know, no idea, chips are down, still try and get the right answer. You might come up with different strategic ways to get the right answer, even if you didn't know. Silly things, the odd one out, or which of the following molecules is best interpolated, etc. These are things that we teach in our hack day in detail, and I'm telling you, they work. Because if I'm at ASA and I'm trying to build a test that picks the best doctors, I'm going to reward the people that think in that way, that strategic way. Even if I'm not sure what this patient has, I can still get the answer right. And I think that's something you should really try in your chemistry study this year, okay? Step one, fundamentals. Make sure you sign up to our email list because you'll get sent through the checklist of all the different concepts that you should be learning for chemistry this year. Step two, chemistry Tetris, thinking strategically about chemistry. And step three, don't give up. No matter how little you know about chemistry, you can always come to a good conclusion and a good answer. So that's our guide for section three, chemistry, the best approach that you can take this year. Good luck preparing and make sure to sign up to that list to get that free checklist of all the concepts you should learn.